Welcome. In this video, I'll be going over leak code 647, palindromic substrings. If you don't know what a palindrome is, it's basically a string that is spelled the same forward as it is backwards. An example here would be level, rotor, or eye. So here's the problem on leak code. The description says, given a string, your task is to count how many palindromic substrings are in the string. Substrings with different start or end indexes are counted as different substrings even if they consist of the same characters. In the first example, you can see that the only palindromes are each individual character, so the output is 3. In the second example, you can see that the output is 6. Now this is because not only is each single character a palindrome, but it's also because the whole string is a palindrome and so are the first two and the last two substrings. So I'm going to switch over to draw.io now. And this is one of the examples they gave us. So your first instinct is to probably use some quadratic algorithm that does a double for loop. And for every outer loop iteration, simply loop over the entire string again and count how many palindromic substrings there are. Now this would definitely work on smaller strings such as this one, but what about larger strings such as this? For each character on this larger string, you would have to loop through the entire rest of the string again and again and again. This algorithm would be doing a lot of repeated work. Now this would be extremely inefficient and we should look for another solution. So how could we create a more optimal algorithm? Well, to do that, we must ask ourselves, what really is a palindrome? Well, a string is a palindrome if it meets one of these conditions. One, a string is a palindrome if it is a single character. For example, a string is a palindrome if it is an A, or a B, or a C, or a D, or an E, or an F. It doesn't matter. If it is a single character, then it is technically spelled the same forward as it is backwards. Now two, a string is a palindrome if it is two identical characters. So if it is two characters and they're both the same, then it's a palindrome. For example, AA, BB, CC, DD, EE, FF, and so on. Okay, now three, if a string is greater than two characters, it is a palindrome if the first and last characters are the same and the inner substring is a palindrome. Now an example here would be ABBA, or ABBCBBA, or ABA. In each example, the first and last characters were the same, and the inner substring was a palindrome. But if I put a C in here, the inner substring would not be a palindrome. Therefore, the whole string would not be a palindrome. If I put A, C, B, C, A, well, the inner substring is a palindrome, and since the first and last characters also match, then the whole string is a palindrome. Okay, so now we know what a palindrome is, but how can we use this knowledge to create a superior algorithm? Well, one way to do this is if we keep track of all the palindromes that we have seen so far, maybe we can use that knowledge to determine subsequent palindromes. Solving subproblems to solve the greater problem is also known as dynamic programming. In this case, a good way to track previous palindromes is by using a matrix. Now this is the example that I'll be using. When I scroll down, you'll see that I've prepared a matrix here. Let me bring the string back down. And now take note that each row and each column is marked by each character of the string in order. For example, my string is A-A-B-A-A-C-A, and the column is marked A-A-B-A-A-C-A. Likewise, the rows are marked A-A-B-A-A-C-A. Okay, so how do we actually use this matrix to keep track of palindromes? Well, each entry in the matrix actually represents a substring. For example, let's take the first entry. A and A. This entry represents the substring starting at zero and ending at zero. Therefore, it would represent this substring, which is a single character. 
Now the entry here, starting at one and ending at four, represents this substring, A, B, A, A. Okay, so you'll notice that I initialized our matrix with zeros. As we iterate through the matrix, a zero would represent a non-palindrome and a one would indicate a palindrome. So the first thing we can do is to mark all single characters as palindromes. To do that, we simply convert all zeros representing a single character and turn them into ones. So to begin, the substring starting at zero and ending at zero over here would be a palindrome because it is simply A. The entry representing the substring starting at one, ending at one is also a palindrome. It represents this A, therefore it is a palindrome. You'll notice that it starts to make a diagonal line down here. Well, that's the point. Every single character on this diagonal line is a single character. So the substring starting at two, ending at two is also a palindrome. And we can keep doing this until we reach the end of the matrix. Okay, so what do we do next? The next thing we can do is to iterate through the matrix and for each entry, we can decide if it is a palindrome. Now remember, if the substring is two characters long, then we simply check if the characters match. If it is longer than two characters, then not only do we have to check if the first and last characters are the same, but we also have to check if the inner substring is a palindrome. Okay, so let's go back to the matrix. So let's start by looking at the first available zero. It is the substring starting at zero and ending at one. So zero, one, A, A. And as you can see, it is two characters long. And obviously since both characters match, it is a palindrome. So I'll indicate it as such. And I'll turn it into a one. Now you'll notice that the substring starting at zero and ending at one is the same thing as the substring starting at one ending at zero. So zero and one and one and zero are the same. Now this is true for all entries outside of this diagonal line here. The bottom left half and the top right half are mirrored. So we can simply ignore this bottom left half. So let me take this and just cover it. Okay, so we finished this entry. So now let's go to the next entry, which is this zero over here. This substring starts at zero and ends at two. So it would be AAB. Now this is not a palindrome, so we can simply leave it at zero. Now let's go down. This entry starts at one and ends at two. It would be this substring right here. Since it is two characters and they don't match, it is not a palindrome. Now when we reach the end of the column, we have to go to the next column, but start over again on the first row. So let's start with this one again. Our next entry is the substring starting at zero and ending at three. So it would be this substring right here, A, A, B, A. Now that's not a palindrome, so we can go to the next one. Our next entry would be the substring starting at one and ending at three. So it would be this one, A, B, A. Now you'll notice that this substring is a palindrome. Well, how do we know this? It's because the inner substring is a palindrome and the first and last characters match. Now here's the magic. How can we easily determine if the inner substring is a palindrome? Well, we can simply look at the bottom left of the current entry. So this is the current entry right here. It is the, it is the substring starting at one, ending at three, A, B, A. If we look to the bottom left of that, we can see that there is a one here and one is the substring starting at two and ending at two, and that is B. When the bottom left value is a one, we can determine that it is a palindrome. And now since it is a palindrome, we can simply check if the first and last characters are the same. And lo and behold, in this case, it is the same. Therefore, we can indicate this as a one. Now the value to the bottom left of every entry in this first half that is not on the diagonal line always represents the inner substring of the current entry. And this is a pretty cool trick when representing a string with a matrix. 
So now that we know how to check if the inner substring is a palindrome, we can then only need to check if the first and last characters are the same. If they are the same, it is a palindrome and we mark with a one. So now let's go to the next entry. Here's another cool trick. We can determine if the entry is of length two, if the entry is directly above a single character. All single characters are indicated on this diagonal row. In this case, our entry is directly above a single character. Therefore, it is of length two. If it is of length two, then we simply check if the first and last characters are the same. In this case, it is the substring starting at two and ending at three. In this case, it is BA. Therefore, it is not a palindrome. So let's continue with the operation. In this next entry, we see right away that the value to the bottom left is a one. Therefore, the inner substring is a palindrome. This bottom left value represents the substring starting at one, ending at three. In this case, it is ABA. This substring represents the value starting at zero and ending at four, which is AABAA. -A -A. Since we know that the inner substring is a palindrome, we only need to check if the first and last characters are identical. If they are identical, then this whole thing is a palindrome. In this case, both conditions are true, therefore it is a palindrome, and we can indicate it by marking it with a one. By the end of this, if done correctly, this matrix should indicate all palindromes with a one. I'm not going to finish this because I think by now you get the point. So I'll hop on over to my code editor. As you can see in my code editor, I have a string here that represents the previous example I have. A, A, B, A, A, C, A. And right now I am simply console logging that string. So let's create a function that counts the palindromic substrings. I'll begin by creating a function called count substrings. And it's gonna take in a string and I'll annotate it as such, and it will return a number. Now I'm gonna initialize a count and set it to zero. Next, I'm going to create that matrix. To create the matrix, I will say matrix equals empty array. Now I will fill the matrix with subarrays with values initialized to zero. Next, I'll set all single characters to palindromes. Since each character is a palindrome, I can increment the palindrome count as well. Now remember that every single character sits on the matrix on the diagonal line. If you're confused by this matrix II, that is because it represents each column and row by the same number. For example, this, one, this single character is represented by 0, 0. This character is represented by 1, 1. This character is represented by 2, 2. And that is why I use matrix II. Now, here's the bulk of the logic. We're going to need to loop through the array and ignore the bottom half. Remember that the bottom half is identical to the top half and we don't need to loop through that as well. Not only that, but we want to start at column one because column zero already indicates a single palindrome. We would start at this entry. And for each column, we start at the first row and we continue on until we reach the single palindrome. So we start here and then once we reach the single palindrome, we go to the next column on the first row and we go down, then we go to the next one, we go down and we go to the next column, we go down, we go to the next column, and we go down and so forth. And to do this, I'll write another for loop. Now for each entry in the matrix, we have to check if the length is two or more. Remember what I said earlier, you can easily determine if the length of the substring is two if the entry is directly above the single character. For example, the entry right here is above this single character. Therefore, this entry has a length of two. 
likewise for this entry, likewise for this entry, likewise for this entry, likewise for this entry, and likewise for this last entry. Now you can check this by typing if row equals 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 column minus one. Now, since this substring is of length two, we simply check if the characters are identical. And we can do that by typing and s call equal 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 s row. Remember that s is the parameter that we're accepting as an argument. Now, if both of these conditions are true, then the entry is a palindrome. And we can, we can mark that by typing matrix row column is equal to one and count plus plus. Now, if the entry is of length greater than two, then we have to determine if the inner substring is a palindrome, then check if the first and last characters match. If both are true, then it is a palindrome and we can indicate it as such. To easily check if the inner substring is a palindrome, we can simply check if the value to the bottom left of the entry is a one. For example, if we're at this entry, then we only have to check the value to the bottom left by going to the next row and then to the previous column. If it is a one, then the inner substring is a palindrome. And if the inner substring is a palindrome, then we simply check if the first and last characters are the same. So I'll start to code it out. This condition checks that the bottom left value is one, and this condition checks that the first and last characters are the same. If these are both true, then we can indicate it as such. And increment the count. So now we're pretty much done. The only thing we have to do left is to return this count. I have a print matrix function that I created, and I'll use it to check out our matrix. And now I'll call our count substrings function. Now, if I open the terminal, you'll see that this is the matrix and this is the value. So let's check our code on the code. I'll grab the JavaScript file and I'll copy this. Hop on over to leak code and paste this in here. I will not need the print matrix function. I'll submit. And there you go, success. Looks like it works. Great, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and obliterate that like button. I hope this video helped you.